Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Our special guest this week is Dr. David Perlmutter, recorded on-site at the 29th Annual A4M Congress in Las Vegas. We'll be right back with that interview after a brief message from our sponsor. Hey there, listeners. It's your host of the weekly podcast, Redefining Medicine. I have a question for you. How much time do you spend ordering functional lab tests for your patients? Ordering from multiple lab companies for hundreds of patients can quickly turn into hours of admin time. But there's a new way to order lab tests that I'm excited to share with you. Rupa Health is a tool that lets you order 20 plus specialty labs in a single portal. You can order all tests you normally do from companies like Dutch, Vibrant, Genova, and Great Plains, and so many more. Imagine you're ordering a hormone panel for a patient that includes tests from three different labs, you have to log into three different websites to place separate orders and then come back weeks later to check tracking number and download results. Rupa eliminates all of that by having all ordering, tracking, and results in a single place. And they also handle invoices, tracking shipments, automated follow-ups, personalized instructions for completing tests, and so much more. The best part about Rupa, it's free for all practitioners. Go to Rupa Health. Dot com. That's R-U-P-A health.com to join a live demo or sign up to see how it works. Now let's get back to today's show. I am so pleased to welcome Dr. David Perlmutter, a board certified neurologist, associate professor at the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine and five time New York Times bestselling author. Wow. What accomplishments. Amazing. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here today. Thank you for being here. So, you were recently interviewed on the topic of social media and weight gain. Can you please explain the connection between those? Sure, I think it's very clear that weight gain by and large these days is a manifestation of making the wrong food choices. You know, we'd like to say, well, it's a, it's a question of balance, of calories in versus calories out. And therefore, if you're taking in too many calories, if you somehow miraculously can burn those calories by increasing your exercise protocol, et cetera, you're gonna be in good shape. Well, it doesn't work that way. It's more about the types of foods that we consume. We know that uh, certain types of refined carbohydrates are handled in the body in quite different uh, manners, and specifically things like fructose uh, actually dramatically increase things like inflammation in the body. Now, inflammation, strangely, uh, enhances um, the disconnection in the brain between two very important decision-making areas. One area that says, I want to do whatever I want right now for me, the future be damned. And the other area, the prefrontal cortex, is more the adult in the room. Uh, and we have what is called top-down control, whereby this frontal area exercises control over the nine-year-old and says you're going to make better choices. So. There's a real connection then uh, between this inflammation pathway by eating the bad foods and then making further decisions to eat the wrong foods so it becomes a vicious cycle. So the real question becomes in our modern times, and I say in our modern times because in our ancestral times, Paleolithic times, that sort of mentality would have been good for us because the more we ate of the fructose, in other words, the berries back then, the more weight we would gain, the more likely we would survive. Well, that's not the case anymore. We live in a world where not just calories, but fructose specifically is very abundant, threatening our decision making. And as such, uh, we revert to a more primitive part of the brain that doesn't really make the best decisions. And that's because you're looking at a screen all day and you're not really cho well, choosing the right food. Yeah, let me, let me work into that just a little bit. So what happens then is anything that can work its way into this pathway is ultimately going to set the stage for 
bad decision making, not just respect, with respect to our food choices, but all across the spectrum of the lifestyle choices that are really important for health, for maintaining normal body weight, etc. The experience generally of social media is one that increases our stress. It increases our fear, our fear of not having enough likes, of not measuring up, of not looking uh, in terms of our images like other more successful or what we would think are happier, better people than we are. Mm -hmm. So it's really a constant bombardment of our sense of self, which mm -hmm. raises our stress level up just a little bit. And what does that do? That fans the flames of inflammation. And as such, it segregates our decision making away from good decision making to more immediate desires. I want to eat that crappy food right now. The future be damned. So that's a very powerful connection then between social media, the aggressive usage for many, many hours every day, mm -hmm. uh, which is what we know, not just social media, but screen time in general uh, is going on. So in a very real sense, I mean, some would say, well, it's because kids are spending so much time uh, on Instagram and TikTok that they're not outside exercising. But if you think back to what we talked about a moment ago, that it's really not an issue of trying to exercise away the excess calories. Mm -hmm. It's not about that balance beam between calories in versus calories out. It's more about the source of those calories, the type of, the, of those calories. That fat calories and protein calories that we might take in are sensed by our bodies quite differently than specifically sugar and very specifically the sugar fructose, which is incredibly abundant in today's foods. Fructose is the body's signaling mechanism saying make fat because winter is coming. A powerful survival mechanism for our ancestors. That's why we would forage for uh, ripened blueberries at the end of the summer and the beginning of the fall because it would allow us a little bit of extra fat so we would survive. Nowadays, more than 70% of foods that are packaged in the grocery store have added sweetener and by and large that is fructose or a derivative of fructose. Wow, that's interesting and a little bit scary. <laughs> it is a little bit scary, but it really tends to frame why we're in this mess that we are in, in terms of uh, ill health amongst younger people. Mm -hmm. uh, because A, so many of their behaviors, uh, with you know those being exacerbated by COVID, so many of those behaviors are ultimately causing increased inflammation ultimately distancing them from the better decision-making parts of their brains, mm -hmm. leading to poor food choices. And what does that do? That increases inflammation, so it becomes a vicious cycle. So you're a keynote speaker at the 29th Annual World Congress with A4M. Um, will you provide us with some key points from your topic? Sure. Um, it's, it's perfectly suited that this is an uh, American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. So when we break that down, we would ask then what is it that's causing us to age? What are the factors that are involved in why we age? Well, you know, chronologically we're going to age, but biologically, are there issues that we can target that might help slow that process? Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the key elements here is a process called inflammation. Interestingly, it's something that we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, that inflammation plays such an important role in the deg degradation of the human body. So whatever we can do to change our metabolism to help reduce inflammation is ultimately likely to be helpful in terms of preserving our bodies and letting us maybe not extend our lifespan, but at least extend our health span so that our remaining years can be healthier, we can more participate and enjoy life and share that experience with others. So targeting inflammation means improving and optimizing our metabolism, how we handle uh, blood sugar, how we handle fueling our cells, uh, what happens to our blood pressure, what is our body weight doing, what are, what are our body lipids doing, uh, what are other factors that are involved in metabolism over which we absolutely have incredible control. And what I spoke about at the conference is the new science of something called uric acid. Now in my day, uh, uric acid was really focused on um, an illness called gout. 
that when the uric acid level in your body gets really high, you'll develop crystals in your fingers and your joint and your toes, and it's very painful. And it was called the king of diseases and the disease of kings because it was related to a very rich diet, meaning a diet rich in uh, meats and rich in particularly something called fructose. Who knew? Mm -hmm. Fructose, as we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. being so important in this inflammation is important in that pathway because fructose is ultimately metabolized to uric acid. So we now recognize that uric acid is a central player as it relates to disturbances of our metabolism, to increasing our blood sugar, to increasing our blood pressure, to altering our lipids such that we have lower levels of good cholesterol, higher levels of bad cholesterol, and really setting the stage for across-the-board metabolic issues like type 2 diabetes, elevated blood pressure, and the downstream uh, issues related to those metabolic disturbances are things like coronary artery disease, Alzheimer's, diabetes, and even cancer. So this is a new powerful tool for our, to our toolbox. Yes, we want to keep on top of our blood sugar, have uh, a continuous glucose monitor so we can monitor our blood sugar moment to moment, and know how our lifestyle choices are affecting our blood sugar. Mm -hmm. But now we recognize that if we can keep tabs on our uric acid, which is very simple to do. You can buy a monitor and measure your level at home. We can determine how, where we are on the scale and then look at the various things I talked about in my lecture, what we can offer up to help bring that uric acid level down and regain better metabolism, targeting things like inflammation and helping reduce that biological aging. Wow, how interesting. And where can you buy these tests? Just anywhere. anywhere. You okay. Can, well, when you have your annual blood work, if that's what people do, that's uh -huh. usually included. Okay. But it's usually included almost always in the context of gout. So your doctor might call you up and say, oh, you know, I got your blood work back and your, your uh, uric acid level is 6.9. So you're not really at any great risk for gout. That's really all that matters. Well, you know, that's the old news. The new news is that 6.9 should be considered elevated in the context of metabolic issues so that mm -hmm. we are striving to keep your uric acid level at 5.5 at milligrams per deciliter, not to be too technical, or below. Mm -hmm. That's way below the gout threshold, but that's really above 5.5 where you start to increase your risk for cardiometabolic problems and ultimately the downstream uh, manifestation, which is inflammation. Bad for the brain, bad for the heart, bad for the entire body. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I'm, I know that everyone is looking to decrease inflammation and any tips are appreciated. Well, this is actually a very simple step. Mm -hmm. So it's simple and it's a powerful new tool in your toolbox. We know you've got to get enough sleep, restorative sleep. Mm -hmm. You know that exercise is really fundamentally important. Uh, probably at the top of the list is diet. And, you know, there are nuances of diet that uh, come and go, uh, whether it's paleo or keto or vegan, all good ideas, all fundamentally sound. Mm -hmm. But adding dietary modification to keep uric acid in check is now looked upon as a powerful tool to rein in uh, metabolic disturbances. Okay. There Thank you, you for sharing that. My pleasure. I have one more question okay. for you. You have so many accomplishments already, but if there was one thing you could be known for, what would that one thing be? It would be uh, being a good dad and a good husband. That's a great answer. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course. For more information on the surprising new science of uric acid, the key to losing weight, controlling blood sugar, and achieving extraordinary health, check out Dr. Perlmutter's new book coming out in February 2022 called Drop Acid. Mm -hmm.